know how I know he's here? We're here. Uh, that's right. I brought him in with me when I came through the door. Can you say amen? amen. And you brought him with you. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. I don't know that he's the one that came up with this, but I, I got to hear Brother Tell Larry before he passed away. He was saying, somebody asked me today, did, 
You think you gotta have the Holy Ghost to go to Kmart or go to heaven? He said, I don't even want to go to Kmart without him. Amen. Hallelujah. He's in it. And he had said he would abide forever. Well, I ain't got nobody to get excited about that. Come on. You'll have people to come and go out of your life. You'll have some that will stick it in your back and twist it while they're grinning at your face. Amen. But Jesus said, I'm going to send the comforter. He said, I'm not even going to go away. But it's better that I go. Because if I don't leave, I can't send the comforter. Amen. Which the Father wants to send. Amen. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, and I hope that you do, let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. If you'd be so kind to stand one more time this morning as we read the Word of God together. Matthew, the 24th chapter, we'll begin at verse 37. Verse 37 of Matthew, the 24th chapter. But as the days of Noe, or Noah, where so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And he knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So also the coming of the Son of Man be. Father God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that you're for us and you're not against us. We thank you that every promise of God is yes and amen and in Christ Jesus. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, that in you we live, we move, and have our being. We thank you, Lord, that we're more than conquerors through you, that no weapon that's forged against us shall prosper with a head and not the tail. We're blessed coming in and we're blessed going out. Only because of who you are. Not of our own righteousness. Not of any of our own works which we have done. But because you are Jesus Christ. The righteous. And we put our faith. We put our trust. Totally. Unapologetically in you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Just as it was in the days of Noah. I've been thinking about this for the last couple of weeks. And you know, you, I've heard uh, Matthew 24 here. This is Jesus was asked, what will be the sign of your coming? Do I got anybody in here this morning that believe that Jesus is going to return one day? Have I got anybody in here that believes this morning that it ain't going to be long? Hallelujah. I know one thing, I don't know when. But I know this, it's closer than it was yesterday. As a matter of fact, it's closer than it was 15 minutes ago. Can you say amen? amen. But Jesus begins to say the, uh, these things that we can watch for. Yeah. There'll be wars and rumors of war. There'll be nations rising against nations. There'll be famines. Yeah. Anybody heard of baby formula shortage? Yeah. Yeah. That's a bad deal, folks. There'll be famines, there'll be pestilence. Anybody ever heard of uh, this little thing called COVID? There'll be pestilence, and all there is war. We got one going on right now. There's been rumors of wars, and you know, we got threatens of nuclear right on the brink, and, and all these things. And Jesus said there'll be false prophets and false Christ arise. And they'll say he's over here, but don't go, or he's in this chamber, but don't go. Don't go seeking. And he said, don't leave me false signs and wonders. Yeah. But then he goes and he says, but just as in the days of Noah. And you read this account, I believe it's in Luke. He also uh, alludes to it just as it was in the day of Lot. And we know what was going on in Lot and all the trouble. And we know what was going on before Noah. Uh, before Noah went into the ark, they were married and drinking and giving in marriage. And, you know, every time I've heard this minister, I've and, and, and rightly so, we, they, they tend to focus on all the negativity that was going on. And folks, these things are going to happen. These are just not something Jesus said just to fill up pages in our Bible. These things will take place. Can you say amen? amen. But i got good news for you. As bad as it may be, what was the days of Noah like for Noah? We know what they were like for everybody else. I would have liked to Noah to the church. What would those days be like for 
the believer. Can you say amen? We find, we find Noah. We first appears on the scene in Genesis chapter 5. Wasn't very long after everything, the creation and the fall of man, we hear about this man named Noah. And he was named Noah by saying, This shall come uh, comfort us concerning our work and our toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. As you remember, when Adam and Eve fell, Adam was, he used to just really, all he had to do was just go out and say, yeah, everything's looking good. Everything's growing good. Here comes the Smith. Everything's just doing real good. But when he fell, God cursed the earth and he said, now you're going to have to work with thorns and thistles and the, the ground's going to be difficult to bring forth fruit. But Adam on the same token, he looked at the serpent and said, I'm going to put enmity between the seed of the woman and you. You will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. Come on, somebody. It may look bad for the world. It may look bad for the sinner. It may look bad for those that are away from God. But just as it was in the days of Noah, yes, we know this old earth, according to Paul in Romans, in chapter 8, the whole earth groaneth and travaileth and is waiting. For the, adoption, for the adoption of the sons of God. Can you say amen? This whole earth is shaken and being shaken to the core because of sin that's upon the earth. But we as the church, we can't let it shake us. Can you say amen? And God began to see in Genesis chapter 6, God begins to see the wickedness that was up on the earth. That every man's thought and imagination was up on evil. That sounds a whole lot like the world that you and I live in today. But in verse 8 of, 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 uh, of, of Genesis chapter 6, it says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I got to be anybody in here this morning that's found grace in God. Can you say amen? If you're here this morning, it's because of the grace of God. If you're born again today, it's because of the grace of God. Amen. You are saved by grace through faith. And that's not of yourself, but it is a gift of God, not by works. At least any man should know. Noah found grace in the sight of God. And I want you to know that the church has found grace in the sight of God. Can you say amen? You might not have it all together today, but you still are restricted to grace. And if you're boxing on God this morning, God has extended his grace to you. Can you say amen? If you're boxing away from God, grace is still available. But do not frustrate the grace of God. Can you say amen? amen. Don't turn grace into something greasy that, you know, I can slide in by the hair of my chinny chin. I can live like I want to and everything will be all right. And friend, that dog won't hunt. Can you say amen? You can't live wrong and die right. Can you say amen? amen. Noah found grace. And I want you to know today that you and I can find the grace of God. It's available if we just reach out and take it. But just as Noah found grace, Noah extended that grace to others. And God told him to begin to. And he said I'm going to establish a covenant with you. Of all the people in the earth. God told Noah. That I'm going to establish a covenant with you. Your wife and your children. Me and it matters how you live. Man of God it matters how you live. He established a covenant with Noah. But it was also extended to his wife and to his children. Now I understand because daddy saved, don't make your children saved. Can you say amen? But it matters how we live. And we know that the Bible referred to Noah as a preacher of righteousness. That for the preach righteous, obviously he lived righteous. Can you say amen? You can't act one way in church, man of God, and another at home. You must be consistent. That's what I said to the mamas last week. You and I must be consistent in our righteous walk before God. We can't come in here and act all super spiritual and super holy and live like hell at home. And expect God to establish a covenant with us and our family. I want you to know today the devil is after your family. He hates your family. He hates the family, period. 
Do you understand that the family, the, the marriage between a husband and wife is the only covenant that God established in a perfect world? All other co uh, covenants were established after the fall of man, but the covenant between husband and wife was established in a perfect world. And that's why the enemy hates it so much because it's a pattern of Jesus and the church. Can you say amen? And what God wants is for you and I, what the devil wants is for you and I to be separated from God. I'm going to establish a covenant with you. Job says this, my covenant will I not break, nor will I offer the thing that has gone out of my mouth. God's covenant will always stand. God will never break covenant with man. But you and I have the opportunity, if we so free will, to break covenant with God. Can you say amen? amen. What was this covenant? That if he would build this ark, and he would build it according to the pattern of God, had to be built with gopher wood, had to be pitched inside and out, had to have one window, one door. Had to be a certain size and all the measures. Could you imagine if Noah tried to build this ark any way different than God would have struck it? That thing would have sunk. Can you say amen? And there's many people today seeking in their walk of faith because they're trying to do it different than what God established in His Word. They're seeking in their marriage. They're seeking in their home. They're seeking in their job. They're seeking in their walk because they try to go outside of what God has called and designed for it to be through His Word. We live in a place that is neck deep in religion. Can you say amen? Yeah. My God, it makes me sick. When I see all the religion and people are bound up in religion, they don't know God. They know about a religion. They know about what Grandma said. They know about what Daddy said. They know about what their preacher said. But they don't know God. And it should break our hearts. Yeah. People is a covenant. We are in covenant with God. Yeah. And He wants us to walk in that covenant. And now He's building this ark. Now I want you to know something. I don't know if Noah and his three sons built this ark together. Were they hard help? Or, but regardless, I know this. They were the only eight people on the planet Earth that knew about this ark. You're not going to build something this big and this ginormous. You're not going to cut all these trees down and somebody not know what's going on. Can you say amen? But that's the problem today. There was people probably even looking at the ark when it began to rain. There was probably people even leaned up against the ark as it began to rain. There was a lot of people that might have had their foot in the door when it began, before the door was shut. There's where a lot of people are today in their relationship with Christ just because they know about church, because they know about the Bible, because they know about God, they think they're going to be all right. But Jesus, uh, you got to get inside the ark. That's what Paul said when a rock of God was shaken and they was trying to get off the boat. He said, except you abide in the ship, you'll likewise perish. I want you to know today, you and I are called to abide in Jehovah God. He is Jehovah and he wants you and I to abide in the ark, he is our ark today. And we must do it God's way, no other way. You want God's results? You've got to do it God's way. And that comes with anything. That comes with salvation. That comes with healing. That comes with deliverance. That comes with church. Whatever, you must do it God's way. Amen. And all these people saw this ark being built. And here he was telling that God was going to destroy the earth with, with a flood. It's going to rain. Well, what do you mean it's going to rain? They've never seen rain before. This man was probably considered a heretic. I bet he was called one of them modern preachers. Can you say amen? Because he was preaching like they had heard before. They thought they could live everywhere they wanted to and act like however they wanted to. But Noah kept saying, you better get ready. Get ready because it's going to rain one day. And I don't know, but all I know is the whole earth, all life will be destroyed. Except you get in this boat. Amen. I don't think the boat was too small. I think there'd have been room for every person to get on if they had repented. Yeah. Yeah. Recognize their wickedness. Amen. 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 I know the world won't tell you. Well, there ain't no way God could have took all them animals on one boat. Yeah. Well, first of all, you you you, you ain't got you, you he didn't take every animal on every kind of animal on the ark. He took two of each cow. Right. Cow, you know, like bovine, equine, canine, 
Feline. You, you see where I'm going? He didn't take a Siamese cat, a lion, a tiger. He took two of the feline. But he took seven of all clean animals. Of their kind. The ark was more than enough. I want you to know that Jesus today is more than enough. You don't need anything but Jesus when it comes to salvation. But we need one another. That the boat was successful because of one another. Because Noah and his sons and their, their wives, it was successful. You know, it bothers me. People say, I don't need the, I don't need the church. I'm not talking about this building. I'm not talking about some brand. I'm talking about this. I don't need the church. I, it's just me and Jesus. Well, first of all, you're out of line with Scripture. Because yeah. the Bible says, forsake not the assembly. Whatever that may look like. You and I are called to be together. Yeah. We need God-made relationary people. Yeah. See, the first crisis with mankind was not that the aid of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It was that when God saw that it wasn't good for man to be alone, that was the first crisis. And God took care and he made a woman for him. To come along and be a help. God made you and I to be relationary people. And God established his covenant with Noah. Because he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And in Genesis chapter 7. The Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness for 120 years. And had no converts. How discouraging it must have been. I mean, could you just, I mean, just maybe let's use our holy imaginations for a minute. Could you just imagine coming home and saying, boys, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I missed God this time. God called me to build this, this ark, build this boat, but I don't know. Ain't nobody listening. Ain't nobody believing. Could you imagine going home to his wife and being frustrated and say, baby, I just don't know. I, I don't know. I think we should just give up. Yeah. It ain't raining. I still ain't sure what rain is. But it ain't happened. And ain't nobody listening. They're still eating. They're still drinking. They're still marrying and giving in marriage. I don't know. I think I miss God. But there was something in there called faith. Yeah. Amen. Hebrews 13 says, By faith, Noah built an ark Amen. for the saving of his family. You can never let faith go out of you. And you must get faith and remain faith and hang on to faith. Yeah. And in Genesis chapter 7, the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For I've seen thy righteousness before me in this generation. Once again, he brings up his righteousness. Would God say of that of you and I today? That he has seen our righteousness? Now I understand. Don't stop me at the back door and tell me that we're clothing in Christ's righteousness. I know we are. Thank God. Yeah. Because if it was our righteousness, we'd all be in trouble. Yeah. But we are called to live a righteous life. Listen, you anybody in this room, including myself, I could go out today and do anything I wanted to. I could go, I could go to wherever, I mean, you know, you can buy liquor anywhere now, just about. Thank God Hart County is one of the few places. Amen. amen. Yeah. amen. I said amen. amen. So the next time you get aggravated, you get stuck behind somebody in the buggy. Thank God they're here. Because yeah. they're probably the only reason we ain't went moist and probably even wet. Yeah. Amen. 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 They're on me. Amen. You say, well, I didn't know they voted. Yes, they did. Ain't you glad? But anyway, will he find righteousness in us? Are we living holy before God? Amen. I could, like I said, I could go out here today. I could do anything I wanted to. You could too. Amen. And some will. And think everything's all right between them and God. Ain't you glad there's always repentance? There's always a place. But you can't go ahead and have no premeditated sin. I'm going to try to keep this as, as, listen, how the enemy distorts our mind and perverts the scripture. We, we, we see he did that with Eve. We see, see he tried to do that with Jesus. Now, I don't know. I don't know the person. This was a secondhand story, but the person that told me the story was told directly to him. And I know this man would not tell anything that's not true. Referring to a pastor who was about to embark on an extra marital affair. And once again, there's kids in the room, so I'm going to 
keep this G rated if I can. But in other words, as soon as the, about when the train was about to enter into the station, you get where I'm going with this? The Holy Ghost of God was convicting him the whole time. But the train entered the station because he heard these words, my grace is sufficient for thee. I'm telling you, God didn't say that to him. You don't think the devil can't pervert scripture? You better know the voice you're hearing. Can you say amen? amen. That wasn't for sin. That was Paul's infirmity that his grace was sufficient. And it wasn't no sickness either. i got to get back to Noah. I'm, I'm going down a rabbit hole. Let's get back to Noah and the boat. And so when he find righteousness in you and I today, we're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. I get it. But how are you and I living today? Are we living one way in the church house and another way in our house? I believe we'd all confess and be real this morning. We're all a little guilty. Amen. Are we living one way in the church and another way in the marketplace? Yeah. We must be found faithful. For 120 years, he preached righteousness. And I think he was in his 300 and some before he entered the ark. You can quote me later, check me later on those facts. But anyway, he. He'd been living righteous a long time. And God recognized him. And now, only Noah remained alive in his family. His three sons, the three wives, and his wife. Could you imagine? As I say, I'm, I'm just, I like to say, I, I just believe that probably people was hanging around. I mean, if somebody started building some big, giant, something I'd never seen before, I'd go check it out, wouldn't you? And today we know about it on Facebook. Amen. It'd be on Instagram, True Social, Twitter, Rumble. It'd be, I mean, we know about it, right? And I, like I say, there was probably people hanging around. And all of a sudden, one day something fell on them. It's like, oh man, did a, did, a, did a bird just pass up? That's water. What in the world? Did another drop. Did another drop. And it started coming up out of the earth. And started coming down from the heavens. But the door was already shut. Amen. Could you imagine? I don't know how long it took. I know it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. I don't know how long it took before that boat started coming up off the, the platform that it was built upon. I don't know. But could you imagine people trying to pry the door open? Doing everything they could to try to get the door open. Everything they could, and probably trying to hang on with everything they could as that boat began to go up. But the grip could only last so long. And some of you today are trying to hang on to life with everything you see, but you can only hang on so long. You need to take the hand of Jesus and hang on to Him. I was reading this, an account that happened and was it, you know, like those hot air balloons, those Hindenburg, whatever. One of those was anchored and these naval naval personnel was, was trying to tie it off and it got loose. And three servicemen were hanging on to it. And two finally had to let go because of grip. They just had to let go. They couldn't hang on no longer. But they know this one serviceman stayed up there. They thought he's gonna he's gonna fall anytime. There's no way he can keep hanging on. Well, they finally get it back to the ground, and he's still hanging on. And they said, "We want to know how you survived." He said, "That was simple. I wouldn't hang on the rope. The whole rope was hanging on to me. I tied it around me." Amen. We must be surrounded by Jesus. Amen. You must be surrounded by His unchanging grip upon you, Amen. and that's being inside the ark. Because because otherwise, Noah. His family is the only one on the whole planet Earth that survived this flood. In Acts, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 8. After 40 days and 40 nights of rain, all living creatures had perished. In Genesis 8 and verse 1, it says, And God remembered Noah. 
and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. And it came to pass, verse 6, and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Everything that was in the ark remained. Every person that's in Jesus will remain. I know there's probably disagreements in here about when the church is leaving. We got people here that's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. We got some even pre right probably in here. But I know this, whenever he comes, it's only those that are remaining in Jesus. It's only those that are in the ark. And some of you won't, and some of us in this room won't experience any of the pre or post or mid because we may leave here before then. Yeah. Still, no matter how you get out of here, you better be hanging on to Jesus. You need to be inside the ark because the only those inside the ark, Jesus is that ark. The only those inside the ark will remain. <laughs> They were there for 40 days. He opened the window. And he sends out a dove. And the dove comes back. So he waits seven more days. I'm telling you, if this ain't a picture of Pentecost, I don't know what it is. Jesus, 40 days he was after he was resurrected, 40 days Noah opened the window. And he sent out this dove. Jesus said, It's better that I go. If I don't go, I can't send the comforter. The dove is a symbolic picture of the Holy Ghost. And for four, four, he sent out this dove and it came back. Couldn't find no place to light, couldn't find no place to rest. So he waits seven more days and he sends him out again. He comes back with one little olive branch in his beak. No, wait seven more days. And they leave the ark. But isn't it interesting that God sent a wind? I mean, he could have dried up the earth in a lot of different ways, but he sent a wind. Isn't it very interesting that when they were gathered together, together in the upper room, there came a sound from heaven as the window of heaven was opened. There came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the house. Can you say amen? amen. This wind filled the whole earth. And on the day of Pentecost, it just filled that upper room. But I want you to know today, the Holy Ghost of God is breathing upon all flesh. That's what he said. In my days, before I come, I will be upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will have dreams and your young men will have visions. Amen. The Holy Ghost is going to move upon the earth today. But it remains. you got to remain in Jesus. I'm about to wrap this thing up. And after he got off the boat, he built an altar. I'm going to tell you, I've seen some of the most prideful people in the Pentecostal realms I've ever seen. Self-righteous. Self can... They can condemn everybody else. Especially if you're not in their camp. But Noah had it right. He built an altar. He knew that anything they needed to die first, it was going to be him. And he sacrificed one of every clean animal that day. And if you and I are going to live clean, we got to get to the altar. I don't care if the Holy Ghost is breathed up on you. Thank God he has. But if you never find yourself a place back at an altar or need to repent, Friend, you're in trouble. Can you say that? And I'm not, no, I'm not one of those that believe you got to sin every day and you can't help it. That's nonsense. That's not Bible. Right. 
But I'm telling you, there's a place that you and I need to come to. That we should come to our, a place of an altar and die. My God, whatever happened to the family altar? Can you say amen? What happened to the family Bible? I can tell you what, most of just lays on a coffee table. And if somebody dies, you stick their obituary in it. Or if you find a four-leaf clover, you stick, a, stick it in there. And it's never read. Folks, you and I must go back like Noah and build an altar. Not only for him, but for his family that remains. Then after he did this, after this, in, in Genesis chapter 9, God makes another covenant with Noah. He puts a bow in the sky. He makes a covenant with not only Noah, but all flesh. See, the first covenant was with Noah. This second covenant God now is making is for Noah and all flesh. That includes you and I. They will never destroy the earth again with a worldwide flood. And I know the rainbow's been hijacked. The Bible don't say rainbow. It's called the bow, but we, we know what we mean when we say rainbow. And the rainbow's been hijacked. Can you say amen? I believe that you and I should wear rainbows everywhere we go. And if they want to accuse us of something, let them accuse us. We can bring up the conversation, hey, this is God's bow. This ain't yours. You stole it. You hijacked it. This is a covenant between Noah and myself. And even you and your sin that God will not destroy the earth again by worldwide flood. Amen. I'd like to tell you everything ended well with Noah. Amen. But it didn't. And after this is the last time that we hear God have a conversation with Noah. The next place we find Noah is he's planting a vineyard. And he gets drunk. Now I'm not saying Noah lost his way or, or he lost out with God. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm just saying there's no more conversation between God and Noah. After this vineyard was planted and he got drunk. As a matter of fact, it brought a curse upon his family. Say amen. I'm going to tell you, I don't care what kind of advertisement they put. They ain't nothing, no good ever come out of alcohol. I don't care how much, much fun they're having on the beach playing volleyball. I don't care how much they're decked out at their little social gathering. You know, yesterday, and I don't know how many years, but yesterday marked the... Uh, anniversary of the U.S. worst drunk driving accident ever that happened in Carrollton, Kentucky. Where a group of kids that attended Assembly of God in Radcliffe and went to a trip of Kings Island. A man coming up the parkway on the wrong side hit that bus head on. I think it killed 27 people, I think. Don't hold me to that. Literally burned, and ever and all those other that survived had severe burns. Lost limb, burns burnt off. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, and I don't believe in no sipping saints. Now to say that it's wrong to drink alcohol and not get intoxicated, the Bible says, you know, I get, I know what Paul said to Timothy. I, I know all those. But I'm talking about being intoxicated. Because when I used to drink, and I used to drink, I drank for one reason. To get drunk. That was it. No other reason. Things didn't work out well. He was there in his tent naked. I don't know what happened other than his son saw him naked. I know there's a lot of people made a lot of accusations and maybe it happened. I don't know. The Bible don't say so I can't say other than this, when Noah awoke, he knew something had happened to him. And he knew who did it. And he was cursed from that day forward. His two of the sons came in backwards and didn't look upon his nakedness and covered him with a sheet. Today, maybe, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I don't, I don't know anybody else's lives properly. As a matter of fact, speaking of that crash, there's a replica of that bus sitting at Colton's and Radcliffe. That's not a plug for Colton's. I'm just saying, if you want to see, and you go in there and it's got a picture of each person's on that bus that day, 
and where they were sitting. Just as it was in the days of Noah. The world was drinking. I just saw this. They were eating and drinking. And Noah ended in drinking. And the communication with God, according to Scripture, is not going to be found any further. Noah lived 950 years. None of us in here is going to live 950 years. But we can experience the grace, the covenant, the righteousness, and the favor of God that Noah had, even when the whole world was coming apart. But don't end up like Noah. Don't get comfortable. And lay around in your tent naked. Thinking you have nothing else to do. We're called to be clothed. Today, I want you to know one thing if you don't get anything else I said today. If you die in your sins, you will go to hell. That's as plain as I can put it. But if you're born again and you live righteous before God, you and I have a promise. And today you may be born again and backslidden on God, there's a place of repentance for you. But don't ever get to the place like Esau where there's no place of repentance. I don't know how, I don't know where that place is. I don't want to find out. And neither do you. I don't know, Brian, do you have something to worship team? Let's stand together this today. Just as it was in the no days of Noah. Which days are you experiencing? Are you experiencing the days when he was walking right before God? Are you experiencing the days when he lay naked in his tent intoxicated on wine? 